they shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadon, Stubborn, but built for theme park news, and welcome to part two of reviewing the 2007 Alton Towers season. Now this is going to run from July up until December, it's the next six months of the season. Uh, so this is from around the middle of the summer season right up until the winter months. And there's not a lot in this particular episode, but... Like we said, it's going to be analysing all the news updates because, you know, this is this is the primary content on this channel. This is theme park news updates and we're going to share all the archive news updates, take a trip down memory lane and remember them all. So there's loads of stuff in here. There's stuff about entertainment, about Halloween, about summer events, about 2008 attract new attractions and so much more than that. So before we get started, guys... I uh, hope you enjoyed that Remembrance Day intro. Uh, of course, today is uh, Armistice Day. Uh, and, you know, we will remember them. We will remember them. So please, guys, like the video if you've loved it. Please comment down below. Um, and please co please keep commenting down below. We will remember them. Just to celebrate Armistice Day and keep getting the Remembrance Day trending. Because it's very important to keep remembering uh, the past generations that served for our country. Uh, today especially. But always in our thoughts um please subscribe to the channel if you love the videos please click the notification bell so you never miss another youtube video and um for now guys let's get straight into it and let's just go for it and let's get into uh the first month of part two in 2007 season review which is of course the month of july So kicking off July, we had the uh, announcement of the Rhythm and Rides concert. So this is interesting. So this came up on the 4th of July, on the Wednesday. So the concert entitled Rhythm and Rides took place, or will take place on Sunday, the 26th of August, and lasted from, it will last from 1pm till 9pm. Now the confirmed acts for this concert involved Lamar, Andy Abrahams, Booty Love, and Regav. And several soap stars were also going to be in attendance, including uh, Louise Lighton, who plays Ruby Allen in EastEnders, uh, Pooja Shah, who plays Karina Ferreira in EastEnders, and also Nikki Sanderson, who plays Candice Stowe at the time in Coronation Street. Now, the concert would take place in a restricted area, so only guests with event tickets would be able to see the show. Guests with normal day tickets wouldn't be granted access to the arena, and the annual pass season ticket holders would also not be given access without event tickets. So, this was a brand new summer event, Rhythm and Rides, uh, so a combination of sing stars and also uh, rides as well. So, you know, this was a very uh, interesting event concept, and there is more on this. If those of you are thinking, when did Rhythm and the Rides take place? Well, there's an article further on down this year. Um, speaking about that event and what happened to it so stay tuned for that but at the time rhythm and rides i think people were getting really excited about it the fact we're going to have a rhythm and rides uh it sounded like a good concept at the time and you know i think people were really excited about it so the excitement was building throughout the month of july uh and then a brand new summer show would begin in cred street so this came up on friday the 6th of july and it was a brand new show called ATTV, hosted in the Cred Street Theatre. Of course, we now know that to be the old Ice Age The 40 Experience site. Um, so if you don't know what ATTV is, basically the concept of the show is that you're in an audience for a game show being filmed at Alton Towers. Four people volunteer to be in each show, two girls and two boys. And the audience has to help them out with various challenges they are given. So rounds included... Whose ride is it anyway? Where the contestants have to guess which ride it is that's being described by another guest. And Cold Shoulder, where they have to try and put on a t-shirt that has been in the freezer for some time. There's even an obligatory gunge tank at the end. And there's a fantastic prize for the winner. A family annual pass to the park and the show ran daily until the 2nd of December, uh, September at half 12, 2pm and half 3. So it was a very exciting show in the Cred Street uh, Theatre. And it actually triggered, when I was writing all this down, memories of the ATTV show. Because I actually saw that show a couple of times when I was younger. And 
I'm not going to lie to you guys, it was an amazing show. It was brilliant. <laughs> I wasn't chosen. I wasn't chosen to, uh, to take part in the show, but I did watch the show and it was a lot of fun. Uh, all round family entertainment for all ages and it was just an amazing show to watch. It was a great family entertainment show. It was like a program gone to a live stage show. So, you know, it was really nice. It was really, really nice and, you know, um, you know, it was like a live game. Yeah, that's what they described it as. It's a live game show. And, you know, I was a massive fan of that. So, you know, ATTV, you know, was a brilliant experience to watch in the theatre space. Uh, now, of course, on the 18th of July, on the Wednesday, they announced more details on 2007 Scarefest. Uh, so, as previously expected, there was three Haunts of Mazes this year. One on Park and the other two at the hotels. So, making a welcome return was Terror of the Towers. Uh, the maze that took guests through the towers ruins themselves, which wasn't suitable for those uh, under the age of 14. So this was the sort of major extreme maze at the time. Uh, now the press release about the event stated, The master of the towers has made room at his table for a few more guests. Will you be on that menu? Also at the park, it was confirmed that the Haunted Hollow, the spooky shortcut between Merry England and Gloomy Wood, which was new for 2007, we spoke about that in part one, uh, would have live actors in, in it during the Scarefest events. So that according to the park, it would be suitable for brave families, but not for small children. So it was like uh, an upgrade, should we say, on the, the family stuff. Uh, now, as well as this, over in Fountain Square, obviously you guys know where Fountain Square is, uh, at the time between Ugland and Cred Street, we now know them to be Dark Forest and Cloud Cuckoo, well, World David Williams technically, but a little bit of Cloud Cuckoo Land in there with the Cuckoo Cars driving school at the back of the new area. Um, there would be a laser lights and special effects show set to spooky themed music played three times a day in the evenings throughout the event. So this was a very interesting concept as well. Uh, it would be suitable for all the family. So again, a nice family effect show. Speaking of Crudge Street, it would keep its kid-friendly theme for the event with lots of activities suitable for the little ones. The press release said there would be a pumpkin patch playground, trick-or-treat doors, flying witches, balmy bats, and a pile up of pumpkins. And over at the hotels, the Haunted Maze Room 13 was confirmed as making its return for 2007 after the previous year's successful debut. Situated in the Alton Towers Hotel next to the Secret Garden Restaurant, Room 13 would only be suitable for older children, so the blurb for this particular attraction stated, Over 10 years ago, the hotel management locked and bolted the door of room number 13 after guests began reporting some disturbing occurrences during the night. Now, each Halloween, we open the door to room 13 to the brave and the full hardly and step inside and face the terrors that lie within. So like the previous year, the maze would get scarier as the evening progresses and outside the hotel will be another haunted maze, the Field of a Thousand Screams. Now, preparations for the new maze started months ago with the maze being planted ready for the event and the press release stated, picture the scene. A lowly cut field of corn gently swaying in the breeze. Night falls. Shadows begin to appear from within the depths of the field. What lies within? Dare you investigate? The maze would be suitable for brave families and like Room 13, the later it got, the scarier the maze became. That free for hotel guests, it was expected that both Field of a Thousand Screams and Room 13 would also be available to day guests, but for an extra charge. Inside the hotels, there will be more entertainment during the event, all of it's family friendly, including the Dance with the Devil show, the Monster Mash party, as well as fancy dress competitions, trick or treat trails and spooky bedtime stories with Captain William. Also at the hotel would be a Halloween zoo, where legs were the main theme, available on selected dates throughout the event. Now kids were expected to see tarantulas, millipedes, snakes and spiders as they attempt to conquer their phobias. Finally, one of the most interesting additions to line up were the scare rooms. Who remembers the scare rooms in these events? Subject to availability, these rooms wouldn't be so good for the actual sleeping, but were sure to be a big hit with those who lack a good scare. Now the press release stated about the scare rooms, Ever heard strange tapping noises in the night and not been able to justify who or where they came from? Stay in one of our dedicated scare rooms this Halloween and we guarantee you'll be first to check out as dawn breaks. It's rumoured that these brave enough to stay in one of these rooms can expect frights up to 2am. 2am? That's ridiculous. Um, so a really, really frightful end to that press release there. Um, and, you know, Scarefest 2007, the official lineup of it, sounded amazing at the time. 
um, having Terror at the Towers, Room 13, and the Field of a Thousand Screams, and the hotel kind of zone. Uh, the scare rooms being brought in, you know, that was very exciting at the time to have scares up to 2 a.m. You know, if you were brave enough to take up on that offer. And, you know, even though I didn't do Scarefest this particular year, it was a very nice looking event. And it's a shame I didn't do that because, you know, I think it was a really lovely lineup. I think it would have been the best time to stay at the hotels. I've never stayed at the hotels, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've, I went to Scarefest once but didn't do the mazes, and that was back in 2011. Um, but in terms of actually staying over at the Alton Towers Resort, I've never actually done that yet, so I want to do that at some point. Uh, either it, it, it try try at least all the hotels at some point in my visits, um, but you know I think this was probably the best time to stay over there, especially if one's to be brave enough for the scare rooms. Uh, it's a shame I was too young for them at the time, but you never know. Um, I think nowadays I would be all right with them, but I think because I was I wasn't really you know old enough for the scare rooms back then, so. You know, I think it sounded like an excellent lineup, and I think that everyone that went there, comment down below your memories of that, because I'm sure you guys have got lots of memories from the Scare Rooms. And, you know, I think overall, Scarefest 2007 sounded amazingly uh, great. So, moving into the next story, which came out on the 26th um, of this month, Thursday, the 26th of um, July. And this was all about the driving school. Now, the Peugeot 207 driving school had achieved the status of most popular children's ride at the park. So this attraction, which was installed back in mid-2006, had averaged a satisfaction score of 9.5 out of 10 from younger guests who had been on it. The drivers were asked by staff to rate the driving school and give their opinion on the best and worst aspects of it. The most popular part of the ride was, according to the uh, sort of survey, the bubble car wash section, according to more than a third of those questioned. Now, the director of public relations at Piorgio, Andrew Didlick, said visitors to the ride of Piorgio drivers of the future, and we think it's important to give as many children as possible the opportunity to experience driving situations at an early age. Many young people can't wait to get out in their own car and by teaching them the basic highway code through the ride, we're enforcing the need for driver and pedestrian safety. Now, the Alton Towers managing director at the time, Russell Barnes, was recently interviewed at the time on FHM and he said it only costs £600,000, so you don't always need to spend big bucks, you just need to be imaginative. That's something I think we need to learn nowadays in attractions. You don't have to spend multi-million pounds on an attraction. It just needs to have the imagination and the creative aspects to enthrall and, you know, emerge visitors in whatever kind of attraction, whether it's thrill, horror, family, kids, anything. So, you know, I think it was a great end to, to the month for, for Alton Towers, especially for the driving school as well. And, I, and to be fair, I tried that ride as a kid and it was brilliant. Uh, I remember the Pure Joe sponsorship all too well. Uh, <laughs> and I've said that in previous videos. Um, but there we go. Great end to July and a great result for the driving school. Indeed, a great attraction for 2006. Moving into August, it was a sad start to August. Well, I should say sad start. It was a sad end uh, to start. Because <laughs> this came out on Wednesday the 22nd of August. And it was the cancellation of the Rhythm and Rights concert. So the concert was due to take place on the Sunday. And it was cancelled at the last minute. So acts such as Lamar, Booty Love, Andy Abrahams were due to make an appearance at the concert. Which would have also let guest ride selected attractions until 9pm. So... Alton Towers issued a statement about the cancellation. Now, this was due to overwhelming contractual and production issues. However, they confirmed that every ticket booked through AltonTowers.com or the Alton Towers booking line would remain valid for theme park entry on the day. And in addition, they would automatically receive a full refund to the card upon which the booking was originally made. So this meant that you could still come along and enjoy all the rides and attractions until 6pm. So... Um, it had some positivity to it, but it was very sad they cancelled the, the Rhythm and Rides concert. I mean, to be fair, like it said, it was due to overwhelming contractual and production issues. I reckon if they had the right production issues, if they solved those production issues nowadays, and I think if they had the, the right tools available, 
I mean, comment down below, would you like to see a Rhythm and Rides concert at Alton Towers in the future? And I spoke about all these things in part one. I spoke about different things that you want to see maybe in the future. Uh, different events. I spoke about the Adrenaline Week. Uh, I spoke about other different things as well. You know, do you want to see a Rhythm and Rides concert in the future? Comment down below, guys, because I really want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, and, you know, it, it definitely sounds amazing, doesn't it? Um... But, you know, it, it was sad at the time they cancelled the Rhythm and Rides concert. But, you know, I think people that would have gone and experienced it would have enjoyed it anyway. Uh, but these things happen. Production issues, contractual issues, these things happen. It overwhelms the park and they decide to cancel it. So, you know, you can't really blame much people about this. But, you know, at least some positivity did come out of August in the end. Because on the 27th, they revealed an article on details on the Thrill Laboratory. We spoke about that in part one, didn't we, guys? Uh, about oblivion and testing the vertical drop on the roller coaster. Now the back. Now we're going to give you all the details. So background, dates, it, it went on, the cost, and the requirements. So we're going to go through all those details for those of you who missed that event and need to know a bit more about what went down. So be a part of the UK's largest and most comprehensive study of thrill seekers at the forthcoming Thrill Laboratory event led by the world's only thrill engineer, Brendan Walker. You guys remember him from the Smiler Blue Peter video. Uh, a series of psychological and physiological experiments will be taking place on our Oblivion ride to enable calculation of the thrill factor. Experience the tests at first hand and view the results for yourself. So this is where it took place. So it took place on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st of September with three sessions each day. So this took place between 10 and 11.45 a.m., uh, 1 and quarter to 3 p.m., and 4 to quarter to 6 p.m. So just before park closed, the last one. And in terms of a cost, it was free. Uh, they just required two hours of your time, and they noted that you would still be required to pay for entry to the theme park. The laboratory is free. The theme park still isn't. Um, and they needed eight volunteers for each session on the three days. And volunteers would be required to wear specific equipment to monitor their personal response to Oblivion. This was right up my street. I wanted to do this. This was right up my street. I think if they did it nowadays with a different ride, I would have done it. I would have absolutely done it. If they'd have done the stuff they did with the Blue Peter on the Smiler, you know, with the, the helmets to trigger emotions and see what, you were, what emotions you were feeling. I mean... I can't say for certain what would I have been feeling right on the spot for the first time. Like what, like, what kind of emotions I would have been feeling. I think there would be some happiness, some nervousness. I think there would be, there'd be some sadness as well. Because usually sometimes I can let out a tear or something on a ride. Um, especially with a lot of force. It might even, you know, it might not even be happy tears. It might not even be sad tears. It might just be tears flowing down because of the forces and it might not be a tear that means anything so i can be sad on a ride for no reason but you know i think that it's hard to explain really with these laboratory stuff i think that if you'd experience it yourself you'd feel exactly what you were feeling and the and the facts don't lie so you know this kind of thrill laboratory was right up my street and i really wanted to do it but of course you know it was depending on the age range as well so um, you know, I really wanted to do this and, you know, I didn't get the opportunity to do that. But I hope they do some more Thrill Labs in the future if they're still going. Um, because, you know, I think, it, I think it'd be good nowadays. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going through all these information, all these past news archives, all these different events like the Adrenaline Weeks, the Thrill Lab, the Rhythm and Rides concert that eventually got cancelled. You know, there's lots of things back in the day. Chocolate Towers, you know, there's lots of stuff they could reinvent for the modern Alton Towers and bring back to the park and bring some of that classic Alton Towers back in a brand new way so you know comment down below do you want to see another Thrill Lab I would personally want to see it I'm sure you guys would want to see it as well um and I mean from the details of it it sounded amazing um so that was the final story of August a very thrilling end to August and um you know long may it continue Next up, September, and it started with very, very exciting news about the following season, 2008, and it was plans for a brand new ride. Plans for a new water ride to replace the existing Splash Cart Challenge were submitted to Staffordshire Council. Now, this article came out on the 22nd um, of September, on the Saturday, 
and the new ride was part of the following year's Project Penzance, that was the code name, uh, which is an overhaul of the Merry England area. The current theme at the time of the Middle Age England would be overhaul with a new pirate theme, so we knew at the time it was going to be a pirate theme, uh, so no doubt with an Alton Towers twist. The planning application was for installation of new boat ride and ancillary structures at the boating lake, in quotations. The ride was rumoured for some time to be a splash battle and the new planning application seemed to have confirmed this. The boating lake used to be home to the park's iconic swan boat before their replacement in 2004. It was expected that the new ride would not be pay per play, unlike the current splash cart challenge at the time. The new ride was one of two new rides for the following year, with the other ride expected to have been a small-scale flat ride somewhere in the area. The teacup ride would also report to be rethemed as part of the changes, though the flume was expected to remain unchanged. Now, this one is a very exciting story, and I think looking back on it, obviously we now know that area to be, you know, the pirate area. We know, I'm not going to say its name because it's going to come up in a later article in this video, but we know what it is. And... You know, when you look back on when it was first reported with the plans and everything, we didn't know the name of it, we didn't know what the confirmation of it, we knew at that point it was going to be a splash battle, we didn't know anything about the second new ride uh, in the area, and, you know, I think this was a much needed change. I think overall thinking about it, it was a, the right change at the right time. I think Merry England had its time, it was getting dated, it needed a refresh, and... You know, and the pirate area, no, they said its name then, um, I said I wasn't going to yet. The pirate area was a much needed change and you know I think this was the right move, definitely the right move. Both attractions were the right move and you'll know what they are by now. But I'm going to go through them in a later article uh, further down this year. Uh, now that wasn't the only exciting news from that month of September because uh, on the 28th of September, so about a week later, about a week exactly, uh, details were confirmed of the third Adrenaline Week. So details of the final Adrenaline Week of the year were released by the theme park. Now as expected, the event ran from the 5th to the 11th of November and the park opened from midday till 6pm with limited selection of rides available. Now, as a result, the entrance fee was lower than the regular price, because if you bought in advance, you'd only pay £14 for adults and £7 for child, senior or disabled. Tickets bought on the day cost slightly more, with adult tickets on the gate 15 quid. The 11 rides on offer during the week were Nemesis, Oblivion, Air, Rita Queen of Speed, Spinball Wizard, Corkscrew, Runaway Mine Train, Ripsaw, The Blade, Submission and Enterprise. It was a chance to ride the rides in the dark if you couldn't attend Scarefest. So the whole Adrenaline Week idea, I spoke about it in part one. Um, a very exciting, you know, addition to the park. And, you know, I think that with that, it was definitely a very exciting one to have a third Adrenaline Week. Again, like I said, I didn't manage to do any of the Adrenaline Weeks, but um, it was definitely an exciting event. And it was, a, it was an exciting opportunity if you couldn't do the Halloween event to, to get dark rides. So, you know... It was nice to sort of hear about the details about the third Adrenaline Week. And, you know, like I said, it was a thrilling end to September. September was a really positive month with the plans for the new ride, and then a week later, details about the third Adrenaline Week. So we had a lot of stuff going on uh, in September. Moving into October, on the 13th of October 2007, the details were officially revealed for Scarefest uh, as the event started, of course. Um, it was the return of a Halloween event for the first time since 2004. The festivities run until Sunday the 4th of November, and as previously reported, Terror of the Towers made the comeback, as well as the two mazes over the hotels, Room 13 and Field of a Thousand Screams. Now, in addition, on, uh, as discovered on the opening of the Scarefest event, uh, there was also a Scarefest spec part map, which, as you'd expect, showed the guest location and scare factor of the various Halloween editions. The park had a later closing time of 9pm throughout the event, with the exception of Monday 15th to Thursday 18th, inclusive, uh, where the closing time was at 8pm. Note that there was no early ride time during the event due to the extended opening hours, so a little bit of extra details there on the Scarefest event on that particular article. Stuff we already knew, a little bit of extra details here and there just to confirm what we already knew uh, and what was, you know, expected. And, you know, the Scarefest event was a big success in 2007. A lot of new stuff, a lot of returning stuff, a lot of stuff, you know, fully refreshed for the guests. And, you know, overall it was just a nice spectacular event and a spectacular day out for the whole family. 
Uh, then on the 22nd of October, they unveiled the name of their Splash Battle ride for the 2008 area. Uh, again, name hasn't been revealed yet. Um, for the whole area, I mean. But the name was revealed for one of the attractions. Uh, and it was, of course, the Splash Battle constructed on the old Splash Cart Challenge site, previously home to the Swan Boats. It was announced as Battle Galleons. Now, the reason why it was announced as Battle Galleons was on a poster which appeared on the fence of the construction site. Now, I'm going to do my best pirate accent, but this is what it read. Shiver me timbers, our pirate buckles. We'll be bringing a brand new ride to Alton Towers. Open in March 2008. Make ready to set sail on Battle Galleons. It's a bad pirate accent, I know. But the ride formed part of the Merry England re-theme named Project Penzance, and the teacups were also expected to be rethemed as part of the overhaul. Again, details were already new. But the big news, of course, was the name of Battle Galleons. And to be fair, when the news came out, as a kid thinking about it, I was actually a fan of that name. I was a really big fan of that name, Battle Galleons. It did what it said on the tin, Splash Battle, then and there, finito, done and dusted. And, you know, it made me happy. The name made me happy. It was like Anthony Quinn in the doing the Zorba Greek dance in that old film. I was just so happy. I just wanted to do the Greek dance. <laughs> but it was a pirate area, so I sort of went, yo-ho, a pirate side for me. But, um, you know, overall, I was really happy with the branding. I was really happy with the construction work that was still going on at the time and the announcement of the name as well. I was really happy with, about, uh, happy with the name. I was happy with the branding about it. And, you know, I was really happy with how they presented it as well. Uh, so, uh, big news over there on that day from the announcement of Battle Galleons. Uh, but then, a about a week later, it did turn very dark in that month. And that was due to a fire breaking out in the main drive station of the Skyride, located in Forbidden Valley, of area of Alton Towers. Now, here's some details on the fire for those of you who were sitting, there were sitting there right now thinking, was there a fire at the Forbidden Valley Skyride? This is what happened. The fire which started at 7.35pm was in the upper levels of the station building in the void between the layers of roofing. Due to the difficulty of getting water air into the area, the fire took over 6 hours to put out, during which time a large amount of the roof was destroyed. At one stage there was 8 crews and 50 personnel from the Staffordshire Fire Brigade at the park. The emergency services were called 2 minutes after the blaze started, with fire engines and ambulance arriving at the scene at 7.51pm. So that was 16 minutes after it started. So no guests were hurt in the incident due to the Skyride having closed routinely at dusk and the park was open later than usual during the last two weeks during their Halloween Scarefest event. The incident caused a power cut in the area and some guests were stuck on the monorail after it was stopped due to the levels of smoke. The fire was visible from quite a distance with smoke and flames clearly seen out across the valley. Guests were directed out of the park soon after it started. And Alton Towers said in a statement that the park will be open as usual on Monday, although Forbidden Valley may not be open until later on in that day. So this was a massive incident for the park. It was a massive incident. Uh, inst incident? In incident? Incident. Um, no, no one was hurt, thank God. Um, no one was injured, thank God. And, you know, it, it just came up to repair the damage. And, of course, a day later, they actually revealed the Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service concluded the fire was destroyed part the Skyride roof was not arson. It wasn't purpose, it was an accident. Uh, in a statement, they said their investigations have concluded the Halligan lamp was the cause of the blaze. And it was unclear at that stage whether the Halligan light that caused the blaze was a permanent light fixture or whether it had been a temporary light erected in the last few weeks for the Scarefest event. So, this was a big, big story, and then it officially confirmed it was an accident. Um, obviously, for the Skyride, it was a massive incident, and, you know, even though no one was hurt, thank goodness, it was a, a, it was a big refurbishment job for the Skyride um, to fix the roof, to repair it, to, to get it back up to shape and get some new roof in, because, of course, some of the roof was burnt, burnt to a crisp, so, you know, they had to replace the roof and replace the inside, so, you know, a full station refurbishment of the Forbidden Valley S Skyride station was, was, was underway, and, you know, it was a big incident, so, you know, um, you know, we felt really sorry for the park, we felt glad that no one was injured, and, uh, you know, we praised the Staffordshire Fire, Fire and Rescue Service and Brigade Service, uh, for putting out the fire back in 2007 and um, you know fair play to you and they did a great job uh, like every emergency service does they do an amazing job um, 
so yeah, that was a massive incident. It was a sad way to end the month. But going into November, we did have some positivity from the park. And it was the official name of the area, confirmed on Wednesday the 7th of November. And this is where we're going to go to right now. We're going to go into November. So like I said, on the 7th of November 2007, uh, on the 7th of November 2007, it was the rename of Project Penzance into a more permanent area name. And it was the name Mutiny Bay, the 2008 redevelopment of the Merry England area. So, it, And it was announced in a Parks staff newsletter that the name would be Mutiny Bay. The teacups would be renamed to Marauder's Mayhem and the ride was rethemed in a spinning barrel style. Planning permission for the new Battle Galleons ride was granted by Staffordshire Mall and District Council in recent times, despite groundwork having commenced some weeks ago. The new ride will be heavily themed, featuring interactive scenes and other ships, and there was no word yet on what the second new ride would be, though there was likely to be a small-scale flat ride, so we didn't even know what the second attraction was still. And all we knew now was that Battle Galleons was coming in, it was going to be named Mutiny Bay, and we had the Marauder's Mayhem, which is the re-theme and rename of the Teacups ride, uh, to Spinning Barrels. So, you know, it was a massive new story about Mutiny Bay, the announcement of the area, the announcement of the Teacups rename as well. And, you know, again, like I said, it's a massive, massive story, and it was massive for the 2008 season. And, you know, we had an idea. I mean, this is the only story in November, by the way. So, you know, this is the smallest month we've, we've covered on this one. But, you know, I think overall, I think it was great news because I think I liked... I mean, to be honest, when I was thinking about it first, uh, when the name first came out, Mutiny Bay, I loved it. The name Marauders Mayhem, again, I loved it. Um, and I was a massive fan of it all. So, you know, I was a massive fan of this development. And, of course, you guys know 2008 would be the opening of this new area. And... You know, it was nice to to experience the name, feel the name. Was it right? Did it sit right? And you know, overall, I was very happy with it. Then finally, for the 2007 season review, we go to December, and it was the confirmation of the second attraction in the area on Wednesday, the 5th of December. 2007 and it was the confirmation or more information on the Mutiny Bay area including that second attraction. The biggest news with the second new ride to be installed in the area would be Heave Ho, a Zampella rocking tug, uh, an example of which can be found in the nearby Drayton Manor of course in their Thomas Land which was their new area for that year in 2008. Um, you know, both Alton Towers and Drayton Manor were getting new areas, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thomas Land and Mutiny Bay. Um, also, it was announced the total cost of Mutiny Bay would be £6 million, which is a significant amount of money when you consider Rita Queen of Speed cost £8 million. Other tidbits of information were revealed, including the new Battle Galleons ride having eight boats, Marauder's Mayhem would be themed around drunken barrels, and Mutiny Bay would also have live entertainment. Now, not just that, but two new pirate themed suites would be open in the Splash Landings Hotel, and construction on the park was continuing at a steady pace with the bare structure of the Battle Galleon station in place, along with most of the ride footers, and the base for one of the larger pieces of theming was also now on site. So, this again was a big, big month, because of course it was the last month of the year, 2007, going to 2008. And, you know, at the time, it was a big, big month to announce more details on the brand new area. And it got the fans of the Enthusiast community more and more excited, like I was. And, you know, hearing about Heave Ho, I mean, I saw clips of the Rocking Tug. It was a nice little attraction. I thought it was perfect for the area. Um, there was no other ride they could have gone with in terms of ride types. A uh, little bit more on the Marauders Mayhem theme, a little bit more on the construction and also the cost of the area. I mean, £6 million. You know, Rita, Rita only costs £2 million more than Mutiny Bay. That is a lot. And you've got to think, it's a teacups re-theme and two new rides. And the flume would remain untouched pretty much. So, you know, you've got to think of it as, well, hang on a minute. That all costs £6 million with the theming, etc. If Rita cost £8 million and this cost £6 million, this is a lot of theming going into this. And, of course, it ended up being a lot of theming. So, overall, being, Mutiny Bay being announced uh, with more details was amazing. And it was a nice early Christmas present heading into the rest of December. But that, of course, was the last story of the 2007 season. 
So there we go. That is part two of reviewing the 2007 season at Alton Towers. Phew, that's a lot of information. <laughs> um, now, I am going to plan for future years. I know I've got a lot of comments from people saying, do 2005, 2006. You know, and I think there's a lot of other years that people would like to see as well. Uh, don't worry, they will be filmed as well. Uh, I'm not going to do them all, you know, one after the other, like the next one won't be tomorrow, etc. It's going to be like one of those long-term video projects where you see one like every few months or something. Um, cause, just because for timing, etc. I want to keep up a lot of free time and, you know, I don't want to overload myself with massive video projects like this one. I mean, if you put these two parts together, you would get, you would get, you know, a big, um, you know, a big, um, massive video. So, overall, I want to wait for the next few months now until the next one comes out. But I'm taking years into account, so keep commenting down below what years you want me to do for Alton Towers, 2005, 2006, 2012, 2010, 2001. Technically, I'm going from 2001 to 2019. So, anywhere in between them, those years, I'd be, I'd be fine with. And then, maybe past years like the 90s and the 2000s and the 80s maybe as well. I might have a look inside them and things like that. So, you know, um, I'm going to stick to 2001, 2019 for now. That's my timeline. Uh, again, thank you very much to the Alton Towers Almanac site for all the news archives for this, for this part and part one as well. You can go and check out part one. That was yesterday's video. Um, and like I said, I'll be back with these in about a few months' time, and uh, it will all be sorted. Thank you very much, guys, for watching part two of the reviewing 2007 season at the Alton Towers Resort. And for now, my name is Coach Shell, Coop, living the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.